uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order for the meetings at 9.33. Please rise. In a moment of silence followed by the pledge. Many, many things to think about in these moments of silence, and I'd leave it up to you individually for the areas that are most concerning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We start off our meeting with there's an echo. Mm -hmm. um, turn your mic off if you want. I don't know that I can because it's you can. Oh, you can. Yeah, the new system isn't quite ready yet, so you're kind of half in the new system, half still in the old system. Uh, so you can't turn it off. No, I'm gonna turn it this way. Yeah, I think he made them live as part of what he was doing yesterday. Okay. So. As you can tell, we are getting a new system and taking some time to get acclimated to everything. Um, that that uh, piece of um, equipment will be downstairs in our community room for further kinds of meetings and whatnot. And then the, the equipment behind that is what we'll, we will be using. I don't even tell we're there. Um, public comment for agenda items only. Never saw it that way. Okay, seeing none. Moving on. Moving on. Do I hear a motion um, to approve the actions listed in our old business items one and two there? So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Proclamations and certifications. I hear, do I hear a motion uh, for Bill Reese, 40 years of service on the East Roundsburg Borough Council. So moved. Second. First to second. And I had, before I asked to move this to be approved, I had the honor of uh, going there yesterday evening and presenting the certificate to him personally. Um, it, was very, it was a very nice, uh, quiet, uh, humble time to see someone who served uh, over 40 years, of, um, not quite 40 years, I should say. Uh, Darn close, uh, serving on the borough council at that time. I wrote myself a little note here because I think this is a time also to thank all of you um, that donate your time to our community and to our county for the work that you do as well. It's important, and we have many, 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 many people that help us on a regular basis. So thank you all. Were you able to give him my message? I certainly was, and I was also <laughs> able to give him. I asked, I asked Sharon to tell him, I agree with it wholeheartedly, but it was 39 years, 10 and a half months. There was a month and a half there that I'm not sure I agreed with what he did. <laughs> I thought you told me it was 38 plus two. Well, I'm being good in the public. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, he, he got a kick out of it. Um, it was it was a nice group of folks I was able to also, and I'm not going to repeat what I said, what John Dunn asked me to tell him, so that's not happening right now. But he, everyone got a, a good kick out of it. Literally. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Hearing none, seeing the all favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Moving on to our new business. Do we have a motion to approve the actions listed in our personnel item number one, items A and B? So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, seeing none, all favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on to number two, electronic financial transactions ratified. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in item number two, items A through C? So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number three, travel authorizations. 
Did I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number three? Items A. And B. So moved. Second. First and second. No discussions. Seeing none, seeing that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Moving on to number four, Monroe County Area Agency on Aging. So I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number four, items A and B. So moved. Second. We have a first and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Number five, Monroe County Children and Youth Services. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in item five, items A, B, and C? So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Commissioner's office. Number six. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number six, items A through B? B. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. We have a first and second. Any discussion on any of the items? Sure. Okay. Thank C. You. Authorize the chief clerk to advertise the notice of adoption of a resolution to deter incurred debt in the amount of four million dollars. This is a a debt that uh, the IDA is we are backing for the Industrial Development Authority. Uh, this is for engineering on the 288-289 project uh, on Interstate 80. Um, this is that we have to, the letter of credit is expiring and therefore we have to do a new letter of credit. Thank you. The other one is G. Uh, we received a uh, grant from the state of historic structures report for a feasibility study on the old jail subject to the solicitous changes. Uh, this is a study of, uh, we'll look at the jail, see what it has to be done to help conserve it and see what the best possible uses of the old jail would be. The other thing is in I, is that the state has an LSA grant um, program. We're applying for $99,000 for the fire school for another prop to be used there. Since you're doing so well, how about O? Uh, <laughs> um, the Monroe County Hospital Authority is a standing uh, authority that whenever uh, Lehigh Valley, Pocono, or St. Luke's, Monroe has to do a bond. Um, that hospital authority has to convene and approve the bond. So this is a slight changes to their bylaws and a, a conflict of interest confidentiality disclosure statement. And it's for 10 years. Perfect. I'm sorry, 50 years. You want to talk about the termite and pest control program? Or <laughs> if you have any questions, you can see me after. Can I have a question? Can you explain that? Yeah. Monarch County is the only county in the state that does not own 911. So this is a um, Interconnect, interconnectivity funding grant agreement with the Emergency Management Center Agency. And what happens is, is that they are doing upgrades. For a 10 county area, all the 911 calls come into Monroe County and then are dispatched to the other counties. And that's part of the improvement on that program plan. So that's money that goes through the county and goes to 911. I would expect in any county other than Monroe, it would go directly to the, the well, it would come to Monroe County because right. every other county owns its control center. Why is it so much money? Like how, what's, 
Because what we're doing is we are, it's the infrastructure that comes into Monroe County and then goes out to the other 10 counties. So that's the. Like the buildings, the people. Well, no, it is, it's mostly equipment and so on. Upgrades. They get these grants on a periodic basis in order to keep upgrading technology changes. So every time the technology changes, they've got to upgrade all the equipment. For communication purposes, so we're saying. This is state on. money, just so you know, it's, none of this is county money. We've also a request floating around for about seven million dollars. If you think four or two is bad, seven million dollars for the conversion of uh, their system from analog to digital. And uh, you know the fire companies are dispatched with uh, uh, through control center, and uh, digital is presumed to be far superior to analog in the ability to communicate with fire companies, other emergencies. Uh, providers and their system is still analog, and uh, they're they've been pushing around and, and <clears throat> waiting for years to try to figure out how to get scare up seven million dollars to do the conversion to the digital radios. So on top of the four that they got, there's also a need for an approximate seven million dollars more for that conversion at some point in time. They did receive a million dollars uh, roughly. To help with that process through Congressman Cartwright's office. So they are taking steps to slowly bring this into place, but it is a long process. Okay. The only other thing I'd like to add is on Al. Um, I'd like to um, thank um, the commissioners the, and the community for the opportunity to serve on the Conservation Board directors for another year. Greatly appreciate it. My comments on Q is I didn't see any this morning, so they must be doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean so. thank you. All right. Uh, no, any other discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Moving on to number seven, Monroe County Emergency Services. Sign your motion to approve the actions listed in number seven, item A. We'll move. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing that all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number H. Capital outlay purchases. Do I hear a motion to approve the actions listed in number eight? Items A and B. So moved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Yes. What is that? What is that? Capital outlays purchases. What is capital outlay? Oh. Well, the capital purchases that we put out for the fifteen thousand two dollars and ninety-five cents, fourteen thousand of that is to build a new uh, judge's bench at uh, MDJ Riley's office. He's moving from one office to another and needs a new bench built. Um, what we're going to do is then take the existing bench out of his old area and use that hopefully when another MDJ who is looking to relocate up in the Pocono Pines area can take that bench and use it there so we won't have that expenditure again. The other one is for a path shot training kit at the correctional facility which takes us that $15,000. $1,500? $1,500. Yeah, we're responsible for all the different types of things throughout the county now that the list is too late. We have to know all the different things that we have to and the budget one, for and, and plan for. And the $1,600 is for four refrigerators in the jury deliberation room in the new courthouse. Okay. Um, I lost that. Um, second. second, all in favor? Aye. Um, Aye. Opposed? Okay, and then computer capital purchases. One's number nine. So I hear a motion to approve the action list of number nine, item A. So moved. Second. So those, are, those are for various computers throughout. There's 10 Surface Pros for the correctional facility. There is an iPad for the new commissioner that's coming in. 
We have a new server for $12,000 for our IT service, information services. And we also have a 4G, 5G cell signal booster for the new courthouse for $4,000, $4,200 roughly. Any other discussion? Just that the ones that are going to the correctional facility will be repaid to the general fund through the inmate welfare okay. fund because they're utilized by the inmates to communicate the restricted communication, but that's essentially what they're used for. Any further discussion? Hearing no seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, miscellaneous. Nothing. Don't you think? I, the only thing I wanted to talk about, I'm sorry, John. Um, I don't know if you heard anything about um, Congress Department rates about the anti-tax. It's in the news. It's in the news. Like, the, only thing, okay. the only thing I'd like to say, because it's in the news, is Channel 2228 reported wrong stating that one of the stops was going to be in Stroudsburg, which is not correct. It's East Stroudsburg. And I just wanted to clarify that. So, because close enough. Yeah, no, I think, you know, Stroudsburg people can use it. It's just, you know, anyway. So more information, more information will be out about that. As I'm moving on. Anything else miscellaneous? Okay, Public comment? Public comment? Public comment? Public comment? Okay, we have with Would you just say your name, please? I'm Natalie. Um, I, uh, I do work for Monroe County Children and Youth, and I am here with several uh, representatives um, from Children and Youth. So we are here today. Um, we're going to continue our discussion with um, how we strive to make positive impacts for the children and families of Monroe County. Um, we recently had our annual inspection. Um, Commissioner you were present for that. Uh, talk about what happened. We had a really good inspection. Um, we were told by the, uh, the top regional um, director that you know, it was a win from Monroe County. And they talked about how well we are looking at the safety and well-being of these children and families of Monroe County, um, despite our staffing shortages. So, Natalie, yes. this was not the first year that you had a seller review. No, it right? has not been. No. How many seller reviews have you received? There's been several. <laughs> I mean, for the 13 years that I've been there, I don't think I've had one that I've been there. And I am, yeah, I, yeah. You're the oldest. <laughs> I am the oldest here. We have not had a bad inspection. I mean, it has always been, there's always been minor things, but I mean, it's paperwork stuff, but we have had seller inspections over the past 13 years. And I'm sure other people at children have been there longer than me. Um, they've, they've seen it longer. And just, just so the public understands, when you say inspection, folks from the state at the highest level that oversees children and youth agencies across the state come in and stay about a week. Correct. And go through everything. Yes. So it's not like it's hit or miss by any means. It's it's very thorough. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, you know, with that, you know, our, our employees, we deal with complex, painful, emotional and at times very, very disturbing issues every single day. Um, I mean, I can stand here and I can give you stories, um, painful ones even just last night. And despite this, we are continuing to show our level of confidence, our dedication to our mission, our agency's mission. Um, again, despite our, our staffing shortage that we've been dealing with for three years. Um, and our staff deserves some, you know, we deserve to be rewarded for that. Um, commissioners, you are aware of our struggle to retain workers, and we, and our proposal to address this concern, it's been over 60 days, um, and we have not heard a response. We're asking for your insight on this. Uh, we feel we are still at a critical point, and it's imperative to retain our employees, especially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's personnel, we can't really comment. Public meeting until things are resolved. Go ahead. Yeah, Jack Fossett, uh, I don't want to be here, but here we are again. Uh, three weeks ago, I was talking about the Foundry Street Bridge and how this, this pleasure that was 
done in our neighbor, our stark neighborhood and ruined the quality of our life. Nothing has changed. Our water has been inspected. Our granite countertop has not been addressed. Nobody has called us. We haven't heard from Italy. And then all on that, you know, the guide rail sticks out over the road and my wife wound up hitting the guide rail. So I don't want to have to keep coming back. I don't want to have to waste my money going further with this. But it needs to be addressed. You know, you, the bridge looks fine. Everything else is crap. You destroyed a, a historical neighborhood and our quality of life. And it's wrong. It's the same thing that's happening with Route 80. You know, I know it doesn't come in your auspices, but it's through PennDOT. And even when Mario said that, you know, when 80's going through, you're getting it whether you like it or not. And that's the way I feel about what happened on my bridge that I took care of for 41 years. You know, we're doing what we want to do, and we could care less. And I think it's wrong. And we should be, it should be taken care of. And I shouldn't have to come here and address it when you know what the issues are. I will Thank contact you. the people about the granite countertop in the well. Okay. I'm sorry, John. I, will you know, contact, I, I don't hear that well. <laughs> I will contact our bridge inspectors, our engineers, uh -huh. okay, about the countertop in the well. Okay. All right. Well, that was through J.D. Ekman, and they had pictures but and reports. I will follow up on it. Okay. And the guy rail, you know, I'm saying sticks out on the, over the curbing. I was. You know, the holes are still next to the guide rails. And this was what, two months after that project's done? And if somebody signed off on it, she get a rebate because the work's not done. Plain and simple. Thank you, John. Thank you. Chairman. John. John. Thank you, Mr. Keith Bagley. Uh, Commissioner Moyer, you've been here uh, 12 years. I want to commend you for the great work you've done. And uh, I'm just curious, I didn't attend every meeting. Can you tell me how many times you uh, voted for a tax increase? One. Very good. And uh, can you tell us? Uh, you know, preliminarily, Pete, once. <laughs> Hasn't been formalized yet. Ah, very good. I appreciate it. And what is the uh, toughest decision you've had to make here and the most choice? Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ask me how many angels dance on the head of a pen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, 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 I guess the toughest decisions that we have to make were Natalie enumerated better than, than I can. You know, the, we deal with six different union contracts and the unions negotiate and you know we try to make it not an us and them but to some extent it is but in the past three or four years it hasn't really been uh, a situation where we've really argued we the commissioners argued strenuously against uh, uh, increases in sour but when a, a union or any group of people works as hard as the employees of the county, they deserve more money than they're getting to a large extent. And we don't have, you know, it's the old balancing act. If they deserve more money than they get, but the person sitting on outside of government looks at it and figures everybody sleeps at their desk 24 seven and they don't deserve anything. So that, that's the most difficult part of it. The joy is the other side of it. Uh, you know, I came into this 12 years ago, but sort of leaning toward some of the people on the outside that thought that people at the county didn't work real hard. And I have found that not to be the case. Now, don't get me wrong, there's one or two mostly to my right that the slough <laughs> off as much as they can. But for the, for the most part, uh, we've got a very dedicated and hardworking group and as Natalie is a representative of children and youth as a prime example. My early years were spent in a field of special education, was, which was heart-wrenching in itself. It pales in comparison to what those 
caseworkers deal with on a daily basis. So, to, I mean, it's a calling. If they, obviously, you can't do what they do for the money. It's for the satisfaction that they get. And I'm happy to report that many of the employees that I've come across, even if it's not in something as emotionally challenging as children and youth, they act the same way. I mean, it's it, they take it to heart. They do it for the public, and they do a very good job of it. So, two sides of the same coin. Thank you. Well said. Anything else? Yes, sir. In the back. Um, oh, Hector sorry. Ramirez. I just want to uh, know with regard to the meeting agendas, how far in advance of the meeting is it in the form online? Day before, Greg? Yeah, we're required yeah. under state law to post it 24 hours before the meeting. So it goes on Tuesday morning. Thank you. Okay. Um, my name is Bridget Shanley. Um, I just want to say thank you, first of all, for I know you recently started putting some of the meetings on. And I thank you for that because that's allowed me to kind of be able to access some of the information that's taking place for our meetings. Um, I guess one of the questions I would have down the road would be if there would ever be an intention to kind of move things back or more people that are working during the week or participate and be a part of the meetings. Um, especially with the elections and board meetings as well. Um, so thank you for that. I'm the wife of a Marine. I'm the mother of two Marines. I'm the sister of a Marine and many other friends and family that Marines. I feel very strongly about our this, the service and the dedication that our, our family and loved ones have sacrificed to support and serve our country. But I feel like here on the home front, some of us maybe need to do more and i think that that's where i know i'm starting to get more involved i have grave concerns about our election integrity and i know some people don't want to hear that but i have serious concerns and i think that there are legitimate concerns that have been recently voiced in in the news and forget about the ones that are not put on the news for anybody to see but there are numerous things that have occurred and do occur machines to me are the biggest biggest avenue um, we cannot see, we cannot count a vote that is going into a machine. We cannot count that. It's a machine doing it. Machines can be programmed. So there's a lot of things that can take place that are very, very concerning to me. Um, I know as the commissioners, you oversee elections. So that is part of your duties. And I know that at one time there was a statement made in a prior meeting that I listened to regarding well, we have to do what the higher ups tell us. But it also states in um, the Manual for County Commissioners of Pennsylvania that it ultimately comes back to the county to oversee our elections. So I just I just want to say, let's do our part here on the home front in making sure that our elections are are secure with integrity. Because if we don't have elections that we can trust and have confidence in as being accurate, there are serious consequences for that because the wrong people are going to be in the wrong place. And that's not good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I would just like to recite some things for a current time that we're going through and or what Congress was on TV with yesterday with the, I'm just going to move on to the PA Constitution because I'm concerned about our safety here in the county. So the PA Constitution from 1776, Chapter 1, Declaration of Rights of the Inhabitants of the State of Pennsylvania, Roman number 1, and I'll just read that, that one paragraph, that all men are born equally and independent and has certain natural, inherent, and inalienable rights, amongst which are the enjoying, the defending of life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and pursuing and obtaining happiness and safety. And I know that you know, when you took the oath to be here, anybody that works for the government, is that was part of the oath that they took. So I'm going to pose this question. I don't know if I can get an answer now. But if not, then I'll be back for an answer. And my question is, 
is with the number of immigrants arriving in our county, like do we have that number of immigrants arriving in our county and where are they being housed? I don't think we know how many immigrants are housed in our county, and I don't think they're being held anywhere. Uh, I think if you're, I'm maybe speaking out of turn here, but I think if there are people who have immigrated from other places, they they are in the process of assimilating into homes throughout all of our communities, which is the way that. I think it was probably intended in 1776 or whatever the date you read was to, to happen. It wasn't to bring in busloads of them and put them in segregated places. It seems to me that we treat them as second rate citizens when we do that. So I think the, the way that uh, it's happening in Monroe County, and I presume there are immigrants here, but they are being, I think, housed with loved ones with. Uh, uh, they found their own place to reside, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I, I don't know churches, if either of the other. I think the churches are helping with that to some extent as well. As well. Um, just from my work in my own local church. Um, but being held almost connotes that we've got a place yeah. segregated for them that we're going to put them when right. they arrive. I on the next more, bus, and they're not happening that way. It's more that's more that's the word I That's semantic. Housed, were they not held for ransom, but were they taken care of? Yeah. If I were back within the school district, that's like it was before I came here, I'd probably know more. Uh, just because the law is we educate the children. So, but I don't know, I don't have that information. They have to register somewhere, like, wouldn't there be a Oh, depending on where they're residing okay. in that yeah okay anything else motion to adjourn okay